Okay, folks, this has been a long time coming, but today's the day. I've been procrastinating for a long time, but I'm going to do it. Here's the uh, one and a half horsepower John Deere Model E hit and miss motor that we need to get back on. You can remember the last video we did the disassembly on this. We were able to see some parts that we needed to get. One of which is the uh, speed knob here in assembly. It's uh, all bunged up and the shaft just turns. And then this is the old gas tank. It has leaks in it. And it's been soldered very extensively in the past. So we're not going to mess with that. I bought a new tank, which the new ones are plastic. This is the pan, the oil pan that separates the oil that's inside of your hit and miss in the gearbox here, crankcase, from the gas tank, which sits directly below it basically sits on top of there and then the motor sits on top of that now we have a little fix that we're going to do on this our oil reservoir cup in here somebody had placed screws in it you can see those screws and there's not supposed to be screws that's supposed to be spot welded down to this plate we've checked the plates they tell you to hold this up to the sun See if you see any pinholes in it. There was no pinholes in the plate. So what we'll do once we get going, we'll pull those screws out and then we'll spot weld both sides of that to fasten that back down so we don't have any chance of oil getting down through those screw holes down into the gas tank. Here's the rest of our parts laid out here on my welding table, which is another big reason I need to get this thing put back together because I need my welding table. Got a little surface rust here from the last time, but that'll come right off. There's new rings on the pistons. I've got a new spring for our rocker arm here. And then uh, all of our main bearings are fine. There was no play in those whatsoever. But uh, these are some more items that we need to get cleaned up and painted all right, let's get after the task at hand here. We picked up some paint stripper in town. And when you're stripping paint off of metal, you got to buy the good stuff. That stuff that they sell uh, the majority of in the hardware stores is for like latex paint, like on a house. This stuff is made to do some really good stripping. It's professional grade and it really cuts the mustard, if you know what I mean. So we've got some throwaway brushes we're going to use. We're going to get this painted all over the parts that we need the paint to come off of. We got a good coat on everything you can see here it's already working so they're saying 40 to 45 minutes on this so we'll let her sit and while we're waiting we will spot weld that oil pan all right we got dirtiness underneath here so we'll clean all this up, get nice bare metal showing again, and then we'll relocate this using the holes, and then we'll spot weld it with the MIG welder top and bottom, and then we'll put some like mineral spirits in here, which is really thin liquid, and we'll see if it seeps out anywhere, but we got to clean her first.
You got the top, the bottom, the underneath, the very bottom all cleaned up, ready to weld. It should weld real nice now. So let's get uh, three good spots in there. I just lined it up with the holes. I didn't put screws in. So let's weld her up. Got our three spot welds in there, filling up those screw holes. Got matching three spots on the back. Shouldn't have to grind those down. Those aren't going to hurt anything. So we'll pour a little mineral spirits in this little well here, and we'll see if it seeps out. We got no seepage, so we should be good to go. Now we had to tilt it a little bit because there is a hole for oil to get out through this screen here. But nothing through those three holes. It's been almost 40 minutes, so we'll get a scraper and some wire brushes. We'll start on this piece because we did that first. Then we'll start on the motor, then we'll get these other two pieces going. If we've got to recoat anything, we will. Well, we got the, about the first four layers off. This side came off pretty good. But this thing, I, Lord knows how many times it's been painted. So we'll wipe this piece off and then we'll put another layer of stripper on it. And that should just about take care of it. We've given the motor, the crankcase cover, and the uh, governor cover once over. It's uh, coming together little by little layers and layers of paint you can see all the different colors this color here is close enough close to the original colors called heritage green the upper layers on this were all the brighter john deere grump green or implement green that they sell in the store It'd be nice to get it back to the original color so i'm going to put another coat on these three items here and then this item here the base should be just about ready to uh, clean up. Well, it's getting late. We stripped and we scrubbed and we stripped and we scrubbed. And we're pretty much down to bare metal now. So I'm going to call it a night on this project. We'll see you again in the morning. Tomorrow we're going to get some wire wheeling done with some rotary tools. And clean it up even more. So we can paint. You can see there's just little residue here and there not too bad so we'll see you in the morning all right we're back out here in the shop all of our parts are all dried up and stuff and we're going to give them all a good rogering with the wire wheel here and then we'll end up probably painting these out in the greenhouse today i want to get some primer on these so we don't have to worry about rust anymore in case it gets a little while before we put this thing back together and then also there's on some of these items there's some like casting marks and stuff we'll clean some of that up with the uh the flapper wheel sander anywhere where there's a little little crazy little sharp edge or something take care of that as well got these three pieces taken care of here we're gonna wipe them down do some masking on them and then we can prime these get these done
Got our primer on, looking good. Now the can instructions say you either need to paint your next coat before 30 minutes or after 36 hours. So it is currently 100 degrees here in the greenhouse. So this is setting up very quickly. So I think what we're gonna do is go get our green paint and we're gonna go ahead and put our green on here instead of waiting 36 hours to do it. Got our John Deere green on here, laid down beautifully. Now, both of these uh, primer and paint are the same uh, manufacturer, so they are comparable with each other. Works out really good to have the exhaust fan in here. It doesn't let any of the fumes or overspray build up. So, actually the perfect painting booth. Thanks, Steve. Buddy Steve gave me this idea a few months ago. Working out great. Now some of you may be questioning why I painted the top of this flange. This surface right here is not actually a ceiling surface. Everything on top of it is. You have your gas tank that lays in here. Then you have a gasket. You got the oil pan, another gasket, and then the motor. So the bottom side doesn't have to seal, so we went ahead and painted it. Now the fun part. This is going to be a booger to clean up. We did a pretty good job yesterday. Got a little flash rust going on, but we're going to wire wheel every area of this, of this that we can get to. And then we'll wipe it down. We're going to have to mask off this whole surface here. This surface here. And uh, right here where the head gasket goes. But everything else is fine. It won't hurt to get a little paint down in the radiator area there. And then we'll mask off the governor face here. And then we'll get it shot once we get it cleaned up. We'll take these plugs out real quick. This is the oil filled plug. This is the gas filled plug here. And then this hole up here in the front is where the, uh, the gas tube goes down into the gas tank. And then there's a plug up underneath here, right there, that drains the water out. But we got a, uh, a valve to go in there instead of a plug. So, we're going to do our best getting this thing cleaned up. I remove this drain tube here. So I can get in here clean better. Plus I'll get a uh, brass one of these and polish it up for the new one. This is just black pipe. So that'll dress that up a little bit. Well, a couple hours dedicated to that, and we finally got her cleaned up. So we're going to brush it down with some mineral spirits, get any grease or leftover dust off of it. And then uh, we'll get this thing in the greenhouse. We're probably going to have to do this in a couple coats. Maybe we'll turn it upside down, get all this underneath stuff first. I might just shoot the green tomorrow, just do the primer today. But uh, we'll get her done. Got her primed. We're going to wait a little bit. Let this uh, gas off a little bit. Less than 30 minutes. And then we'll come in here with the green. The motor is green. You can see all the casting grinding they did up here. I didn't want to really clean that up because it was already gouged out. It, uh, it looked fine. We've unmasked our other parts. Took all the masking tape off of them before the paint got too hard. 
we'll let this sit for about 30 minutes and then we'll come through and pull all the masking tape off of this while I'm waiting we can go in the shop and there's a couple things we can do to some other parts now on our head here they've got some weird exhaust thing this looks like an old belt pulley or something they've got it tack welded onto a piece of black pipe I want to uh, spin this black pipe out of the head and we'll put a proper exhaust on this thing Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bolt out and remove the rocker arm because we have a new spring. This spring is broken and this has also been welded so I want to clean it up a little bit so it doesn't look so ugly. Uh, if I have too much issue I'll order a new rocker arm from Flywheel Supply. So let's get this one off. Next thing I want to do is I want to check, see how the valves are seated, how well they're seated. So what I'll do is I'll take like some PB blaster and I'll put some in the intake port and some in the exhaust port and hold this thing upside down. I'll do one at a time to see if it just flows out of the valve there or if it just barely seeps. That'll tell me how, how good the seats are. The valves are seated really well. Not, I didn't even get any seepage out of those valves. I uh, filled this up to the top of the hole on the intake side. Nothing came out and I'm like, well, is it even down there by the valve? And I pushed the valve and it all came puking out on the table. I did the same thing with the exhaust. Both valves seat fantastic. So that's good news. We won't have to do a valve job on this head. Okay, things we still need to paint is the head, the rocker arm. We need to paint the uh, rod, not the rod, but the main bearing caps and then the trip lever on the rod here. I don't know if I'm going to paint the rod or not. I might polish that out, make it look trick. But that's it. All the rest of these parts are inside the motor, so they don't need to be painted. So let's go out and unmask that motor before we wrap things up today. Isn't she pretty? There's only one spot we missed right here. Didn't realize that was exposed, but there's going to be touch up later after final assembly, and we can just hit that with a brush real easy. But uh, next time you see this motor, probably going to be going together. All we have left is paint, is some smalls, and then we can start reassembly. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this video up. That job wasn't terrible. It wasn't uh, worthy of the level of procrastination that I exhibited towards getting this prep work done. I could have done it a long time ago, but I was just dreading scraping all that paint and the wire wheeling and all that. But it wasn't too bad. So come back uh, next time. I don't know what we're going to be doing, but the next time you see this motor, we'll be putting it together. So... Till next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us here at Mark Kelly Farm.